Welcome back to the TSL Code S round of eight. We do have Deer up against Classic here. Deer has won the last two games and is looking to get one more to go into the round of four. We're going to our second big map, Iron Fortress. It's been all about the DTs in every game so far. But we'll see if that trend continues going into Iron Fortress, one of our huge maps, so much potential for proxy, hidden, you know, dark shrines. Tech cancels, you know, like we saw from Deer in this particular game. Yeah. I wonder uh, if either of these players is going to attempt to go for that, especially as you get later into the series. It's uh, it's kind of scary. You know, even Deer in his position, maybe he, he's got one map to lose, of course, before he does go into game number five. Maybe he'll try on this map to go for something insane that maybe Classic is not going to see coming. Or as Classic, this is his last life. He has to win two in a row. I would be surprised if he doesn't play uh, very safe here. Yeah, I think an expansion, a robo-oriented expansion build is the best plan for Classic, considering where he is in this game. The only weakness, if you do this, is just that Deer plays a greedier expansion and pressures you a little bit with Stalkers and then just gets away with it. Um, but I think you have to play safe at this point. You do not proxy Oracles. You do not go for a blink all-in. You play safe. You get an expansion up and try to meet Deer in the mid-game on this map. It's a bigger map. So we'll see if that's the plan here. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see what these two players do want to do. As you mentioned before, the map is Iron Fortress. Deer one win away from taking the entire series. And I think this would be the biggest upset out of all the round of eight matches we had. You've said before, definitely don't sleep on this guy, but Classic, definitely the favorite to get out of this one. Definitely so. A champion of GSL, the recent Star League champion, versus someone who has not had a championship title since 2013 and has had somewhat mixed results in his Pro League re results this year. Yeah. Deer really turning it on, looking to prove to everyone that he is back. Let's go back into another game of StarCraft here, set number four on Iron Fortress. <laughs> In the bottom right, in the red, one game away from victory. Samsung Galaxy Tia. King of the world in 2013, trying to reclaim that. He's up against a two-time Korea finalist or champion, I should say. As well as I am Shenzhen's champion. Yeah. where he won a ton of PvPs, as you were mentioning before. Just uh, showing a lot of PvP strategies and mindsets, though. Actually, a lot of... Um, nothing really comes to mind for me, actually, for a finals that Classic actually got to but didn't win. Has that happened before? Do you know? I'm trying to think. No, I don't think so. If it has happened, definitely tweet at us and uh, let us know. I'm at Brendan Valdez. He's at Proxy Wolf. Congrats, and Josh and Darren. Marriage is great. Marriage is great. <laughs> Congratulations. Enjoy your life together. And I hope it's filled with StarCraft. Yes. <laughs> well said, Wolf. That's the best thing about getting married is then you can watch StarCraft with your spouse. Yeah. Anyone will tell you that. No longer just your boyfriend or your girlfriend. It's a bit more serious uh, watching StarCraft this time around. Absolutely. Just something beautiful about it. Get a cat too, then you got the full <laughs> triangle of three people watching together. What if they're dog people? Can't really tell them to get a cat. That I could know. tell them to get a cat. That's fine. Cats, you, they cats don't have to great. listen to me. They can make their own adult choices. They're adults and they're married. Yeah, that's true. They could do whatever they want. Um, I would I would get a cat, but uh, me too. Do dogs are cool too. I was thinking about maybe getting one dog and one cat. We can hang out together, but none of those like small dogs. No I small I dogs. I like bigger dogs. Yeah, at least medium size. Yeah, you get the small ones; they get a bit yappy, and um, mm. it's just it's just not for me. Me too. I'm glad we're on the same page here. Yeah. Let's get married, Wolf. Okay, let's do it. Uh, <laughs> yes, is my answer. Great. That's awesome. 
Now, um, we are going to see these scouts kind of go the wrong way but hit each other's bases at the exact same time. This is somewhere out there, the guy who made this map is like looking at me being like, see, four player maps are fine. I'm like, oh, this is a one in a million situation <laughs> that this happens, that the pro scouts get there at the same exact time as if this was a two player map. They're actually going to pass each other on their way home too. It's going to be good. Actually, both players are going to know that there is no kind of proxy shenanigans going Ooh. on. Oh. Actually, because yeah. Deer takes a watchtower first and sees it's not on his way home, guess what he immediately does? He sends a stalker down to check for it. Stalker That's really goes smart. down and a robotics facility very fast for both of these players. And uh, if you will notice, Classic is kind of... Um, well, actually, not yet. Deer is going for the build that we were thinking of, possibly. Going for a robo with a bunch of sentries, maybe going to expand. Yeah, that safe robo-oriented expand. And it is going to be Phoenixes from Classic, not Oracles. Makes sense, considering his Stargate was pretty late. But he's going to have to find some damage and control with these Phoenixes, considering his Nexus will be so far behind. And Deer, after checking all over for proxies, forward pylons, is content to go across the map with his own probe to try to scout the Nexus. Even with one Stalker here, if he commits to it, he should be able to see the Nexus, and he will. Yep. Smart choice. Very nicely done. He's going to have his Nexus up pretty safe here. Phoenix is, I don't know, he's going to be able to control the map for sure. And once he does see the Nexus of Deer, uh, he should be able to go for his own Nexus pretty quickly here. But uh, is going for Immortals and extra gates, so maybe he wants to go for some kind of timing push here. It could be. He is going to scout the Nexus now. We verify that it's been very far along. Doesn't know what sort of tech is really going on in the main, though. But this Phoenix is going to help to verify that. And I think you're right. We're seeing him move out here. An extra gate. Uh, well, I, he actually... Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Canceled the portal, I believe. And then is going for the, uh, for the Nexus here a bit faster. Yeah, perhaps he's getting the Immortal, expecting it might be Blink Stalkers hiding up there in Deer's base. And now that he knows it's not a uh, quick, you know, Blink Stalker attack, and there is a Nexus, he can add his own. But he still needs to find damage. If you ever scout a base and just, as a result, add your own, you're not doing the right thing. You have to do more. Because um, the timing of that expansion is everything. Going to commit to one lift here. But taking a lot of damage already on one of those Phoenixes. Ooh, getting... He Pretty actually will probably here. lose it. Yeah. If, if he, he targets, targets it, there it is. Perfect. Deer massively ahead now in this yeah. early game. Classic. Not looking nearly as smooth as he has in some other series here. Maybe getting a bit nervous. Not really Classic-like. You know, usually a pretty calm and collected player. Part of the reason why he's able to win uh, finals so easily, usually. This is just not worth it either. I have to really argue against that probe lift there. Nearly lost a Phoenix for it. Well, it's, it's going to delay the forward pylon. And he, he doesn't lose the Phoenix. I'm actually... I mean, I, I totally see what you, see what you mean. What, I totally see what you're saying and what you mean, but I just don't even know if this move out from Deer is 100% necessary. Because uh, now he actually finds himself vulnerable. Does he have enough energy here for another Proton Overcharge? He should. There it does go. Uh, he's still going to lose this uh, Nexus, or the, rather the Mothership Core, and... Um, Main base a little bit exposed. Free Stalker here. Not sure what he was doing so far out of the base. But Classic really cannot afford to lose units at this point in the game. A lot of probe harassment going down. I feel like the only risky choice for Deer on this cross spawns uh, sort of scenario on this big four player map versus Phoenix play was to move out. <laughs> oh, look at this. He's actually going to force field that round. And he's got three sentries, and they are not being focused down. Second Photon Overcharge is going to come down. This is really questionable, this attack here. He kills very few probes and is killing a shield on the Nexus. Did he even get the Mothership Core? I think he did, just barely. Uh, no, actually, in fact, he did not. And now here comes the the Phoenix is to lift up and trap these stalkers. He's got Immortals to deal with these units oh, as boy. well. Yeah, that, this that was is just, not the way I envisioned that attack going, for sure. Um, this is just a sloppy game out of Deer, I have to say. He had a huge advantage, and he's like squandering it in every way possible. Let's talk about what went wrong. There are Phoenixes on the map with high energy. He's got four of them. You move out across the map with leaving only two Stalkers and a Mothership Core that only has enough for one overcharge at home, which means that he's going to find damage no matter what. 
you know, he, you're walking into a cross map scenario where you don't have a forward warp in point. He's got immortals out. He should, at least by this point in time, have immortals out and a nexus cannon. You don't have that many stalkers, so you have to warp in some stalkers at home. And then you attack into the nexus and don't really target the units. You kill half the shields. It was just a sloppy attack in general. And I think the better choice would have been just simply to maybe even take a third base or add a robo bay or extra gates and take a third base, you know, yeah. do something like that. I mean, what was he really trying to do with that attack after all? I guess maybe he thought he was just farther ahead than he actually was and that he could possibly burst, uh, burst down the Nexus, but especially with the double overcharge there, it's not like he, he could have really stayed long enough for that to come down and maybe eventually take it down. He also did have only three sentries, so couldn't have held the ramp forever. Yeah, and he missed his first four shield, so a lot of those yeah. units spilled down. Um, this makes a lot more sense, though. This time when he moves out, yeah, if he loses a few probes, that's kind of annoying, that's a bit unfortunate, but he has a large enough stalker force to where this attack is warranted. He has a third nexus coming up, and he's got plus one on the way, so he's got a lot of follow-up to this, should this, uh, you know, only do damage and not kill, but this very well may kill. Yep. He added a ton of gates here, and he is going for this big game type of push. Blinks on top of the Immortal, gets his entire army time warped here, but he's doing a ton of damage at the same time. Yeah, but there's a lot of Zealots here at the front, and that is the key. He's got to blink past them and kite through this Immortal, knowing there's no energy for a Nexus Cannon. This is a smart attack, and I do like it a lot. He's going to have to continue to micro, though, target down the Stalkers first, and then kite away against those Zealots, and that's I, exactly what we're going to see. He's just got it. He's, he has so many gateways back at home. And he's going to warp in five more Stalkers. He's done so much damage. Finally, the Phoenix has come back. But well, they're a bit too late. They're yeah. no longer really relevant in this fight because there's nothing to do damage from the ground once these units get lifted. There's way too many Stalkers here. Going to be picking off unit after unit. The Phoenix is trying to do whatever they can, slowly pick away at those Stalkers. And, and you, Immortal does come out. You said it earlier, man. You think this is it. It looks like it is. A big blink forward here targeting down that Immortal. A few probes off the line here to try to micro. But look, he kites back, taking out more and more Phoenixes. And this is just oh. going to get worn down eventually. Don't forget, he has a third base and now has plus one. Look at Classic. He's kind of smiling in the booth. I think he's getting an inkling of how this game is going to end at this point, losing so many of his workers. Whereas Deer is only committed to 48. Finally now going for a transition, but I think he could just press the issue here. Gonna blink onto the another Immortal that does come out here, but gets immediately focused down. This is just a showcasing of Deer's skill and preparation. Classic gave him a huge thing, uh, you know, huge bar of preparation, and I gotta say, it's true today. Really well played series, great transitions, excellent builds, and he deserves this. He's getting a top four for the first time in two years. It's fantastic, man. He's really looking in form tonight, that's for sure. There is a Void Ray out here, and you do have to respect them, and you have to respect Classic, but it's not going to matter. GG, GG Deer, Deer is going to the round of four. Well done. Very good studying of Classic's play. He had a lot of PVs to look at. Playing on these two giant maps as well. Very, very carefully. Safe expanse, pressure play. A sloppy attack in that game, but he had such a lead. It just simply did not matter. His second attack was brilliant. Taking a third days, getting plus one behind this. If he trades out the Immortals and kills some probes and doesn't win the game, he still has a Mothership Core for one overcharge at home. Force the, with this many Stalkers, you force the Phoenixes to go home ASAP or you win. The Phoenixes came back late, didn't get that much harass. The first attack was sloppy, the second attack was smart, and it was very well executed. Great micro. And his blinks were incredible. He blinked over the Zealots, targeted down the Immortals, kited, targeted down the next Immortal. When the Zealots are on top of him, he blinks back over them again, just keeps kiting his way through. Yeah. Some unfortunate games there for Classic. That last one, Deer scouting his detection, like, I think it was two or three times. And uh, that's really what got the ball rolling there, that crazy game on Expedition Lost. The next one on Cactus Valley, uh, it, the Nexus was so late for Classic, he tried to commit to killing Deers and he just couldn't kill it. From there, he was way too far behind. Tried to make it work with DTs, it didn't. And then you guys just saw that last game. Uh, deer with a very nice attack there. Yeah, winning Iron Fortress, and he will not Classic. Now Classic is out of Star League and GSL, the defending Star League champion, not able to keep it up. And Deer will move on to face either Bjell, who he defeated, as you mentioned, in the group stage, or Gumiho, you know, someone he has defeated in the past. I would say that Bjell definitely has leveled up a bit since that round of 34 uh, series against Deer. But at the same time, Deer has leveled up a bit himself. 
엘리전할때네도영이어딘가에건물을짓고있다는거는알았는데제가찾지를못했어요그래서누가본순간아여자나오게구나했는데우간위치도재밌었죠네자 <웃음> <웃음> 불편하다, 뭐 답답하다 이렇게 말씀하셨던 적이 바로 엊그제 같은데 네. 굉장히 경기력이 좋아요. 요즘 좀 다른 게 있나요? 요즘 like 진짜 경기를 well 할때 네, 저도 된다는 생각을 가지고 하니까 부담감이 없으니까 uh, 진짜 좀 자신감 있게 플레이를 하는 것 같아요. 예전에는 네. 좀 항상 지다 보니까 축되고 like 그런 게 많았는데 네, 지금은 네, 저도 된다는 생각으로 하니까 like 네, 잘 풀리는 것 같아요. 네, 잠시 후에 really 상대가 이제 한지원 선수, 고병진 선수 중에서 이제 가려집니다. 네. 어떤 선수 만나고 싶으세요? 저는 개인적으로 고병진 선수 만나고 싶은데 네, 사람들이 네. 아, 아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아아